Hello, my name is Arthur and in this video we're going to do a little bit with the tile map and this is a little bit experimental so like I'm going to code it in and get it working but exactly where the code is and how well it will scale um, further on when I have more than one level that is um, something I haven't figured out yet so this is just kind of playing around with an experiment to get something working and to try an idea. So the idea is to learn how to make hazard tiles. So I'm going to make a section of hazard tiles and in this instance it's going to be an ice tile. So we'll just get into GIMP and we'll make our second tile. Um, we'll try to do that quickly and make things easy. So. Our tile size is 64 by 64 still. And we'll fill that with transparency and zoom in on it so we can see good. We're going to need to show the grid and snap to grid. And we'll need to configure the grid. And I'm going to set it at an 8 by 8 so that we have even increments going across the board now i've selected a couple of colors i have a darker blue and a kind of brighter blue so that's what i'm going to use we'll edit fill the whole tile in get the rectangle select it's still set up the way that it was so it has rounded corners at the nine radius that it was left at when we made the last tile so i can just select all control a click on it that will get me the radius shape for the tiles select the inverse so invert that selection and cut it out and I'm pretty sure that gets me the exact tile size that we made in the last um, in the first tile effort so that's our ice tile start now we'll just make it a little bit more so I selected the slightly darker color and we'll draw a path. So we need to set the path tool to design. And we'll just do a zigzaggy line. So we'll just zigzag across the screen. And stroke that path we're stroking with a line width of two and a solid color which will be the foreground color so we can just stroke that and change to the move tool that will let us just pick this path up and move it stroke and we'll just fill this pattern in going across And each time it's snapping into the appropriate location. So there's not a lot of effort to place the path or to get the pattern that I'm looking for. So we can do that one, stroke, and that's it. So we'll call that our ice tile. So we'll export that, we'll go into our project file, we'll call it block 1 and export that, which I've already done. And we can just close this up. So block 1 is already here and I have the tile map open so let's add it in as a tile. We'll make block one into a tile. Oh, new single tile. Select the region, give it a collision shape. We can save that, control save. And draw some ice tiles in. So let's select our ice tile. And draw in a little region of ice ground. 
This won't affect uh, enemy players at all, just the uh, player. So, with our tile set, we can see in their names. Um, this one has a zero, this one has a one. These are actually also the IDs for the tile. So what we'll do, and this is the part where I'm not going to, this is not where the script is going to end up in the end because um, with it in a location like this, it won't be scalable. Like I'll need to wait, come up with a way to make hazard tiles be scalable for different levels so this is not the place to do that this is just the place to put it to get it working um this is where um the check would happen for what tile we're standing on because there's really no other place to put it it has to happen at get slide count because that's where we know that's where the collisions are measured. So that's how we um, will come across it. So what we want here is a variable for position. So we're going to go variable pause. Oh, actually, first thing we need to do is find out um, that we're standing on is tile map. If the collision is um, tile map so we go if collision dot collider is tile map because we could be colliding with the block or the enemy or <clears throat> so in get slide count we're going to get an array of collisions that are occurring it iterates through those collisions and the ones that are with the tile map will get checked here. So we'll go variable position equals collision dot collider dot world to map. That's wrong. World to map position. Position equals collider or collision dot normal <clears throat> minus equals that should be position minus equals collision dot normal um, variable tile ID that's no good tile ID equals collision dot collider dot get cell V pause which is getting the cell ID at this position Then we would go if tile ID equals one. Um, X cell D cell equals point zero five. Else X cell D cell equals its default value of 0.25 so that's acceleration deceleration um, that's applied to the lerp when we're calculating velocity x so that's how quickly it accelerates or decelerates and by lowering that value the player should become less responsive when he's on top of a tile of id1 um, a tile of ID 1 is the ice tile because this tile is ID 0 this tile is ID 1 
So that should all work. Let's give it a run and see. I have a typo there in world to map. So we'll just jump down, run to the ice, and see what happens when we change directions. So it's a little bit slippy and the values need to get played with some. So let's play with the value to come up with something that maybe works a little better. Let's do something like drop it by... We'll drop it down to 0 .005. So that should make it quite slippery. And we would just play with that value until we get it to the place that we want it. That's good and exaggerated so it really shows what it's doing by doing that. So he was able to pick up speed there really quickly after the jump and land or after the bounce land. Which I guess that's okay. And overall I think that's a fairly successful experiment. It's having a heck of a time coming to a stop there. But that's okay. So yeah, this is um, in an experimental place and probably probably would get changed a little bit. Um, some of this would have to be here, like, but the tile ID that is being determined to be a hazard, that would be open to change and depending on what level we were on and, and yeah, it would have to be, it would have to be different than this to be scalable. But the actual checking the tile map for what um, tile we're standing on, that's pretty much stuck here because that's happening in, as a, it's an aspect of move and slide that we're using to do that. So a portion of this needs to be here and a portion of this is just kind of stuck here because we only have one tile and in one map. So we don't really have a way to make it scale yet. We'll consider that in the future and we'll leave this here for now. And maybe that's something to mark and keep in mind that this is something that I'll need to examine and revisit to decide exactly where that should be and how it should look. So hopefully that's um, a useful little bit and we'll look at other types of hazard tiles and how to implement stuff like that in, in our little effort in the future. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly know what I'm likely to do in my next uh, video, but I'll come up with something and until then, take care.